All right, everyone. It is me, Johnson Chan, and uh, yeah, I woke up at like nine twenty-five a.m. But you know, I always make sure I get a really good night's sleep, especially because I'm learning so much stuff on the internet, right? You know, between coding, uh, like game development, and then you know, of course, listening to uh, you know Jesse Lee Peterson and all that Christian church stuff. You know, it's uh, my mind's absorbing like you know, a ton of energy. In fact, I had to actually get myself to not code yesterday, simply to make sure that my brain, you know, is able to rest, which makes me a little jittery because I was like, oh, I, I feel like I need to keep coding. But instead, I just wound up uh, watching a bunch of videos about how can I remember all the stuff I'm learning programming, because I'm not going to remember a lot of stuff. So uh, yeah, so basically a lot of these uh, professional programmers on YouTube, they all kind of say the same thing. Just remember, just remember the concepts and like the principles of programming, right? You know, uh, you don't have to necessarily memorize the actual syntax, which is basically like grammar, right? You know, um, so it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, okay, Cause, yeah, because because uh, because back then you had to kind of remember all that shit because you didn't have things like t what we have today, where you have auto complete and auto suggestions that are actually really good. So uh, so now now we just rely on the auto suggestions to remember the syntax, and then I just have to remember. Oh yeah, if I want to create like a character that can jump, it doesn't have any bugs. Oh yeah, I need to remember to put a ray from my player and point it downwards towards the ground, so it's always checking to see if the ray is hitting the ground, right? And if 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 yes, then you can jump. If not, you're in the air, so don't jump, right? Don't allow the player to keep jumping, and. Uh, whatchamacallit uh so that is the that's an example of a concept uh but i'm pretty but i think in my game nobody's going to be able to jump because i want to keep it simple like the like this game you know because this thing actually has an alexa ranking of like uh 6600 in the world so basically this thing gets a ton of traffic you can clearly see how many pl uh, people play this like this simple ass game uh and then you actually have people streaming it on twitch so I'm kind of hoping someday I'll have something like that too. So people will either be playing the Battle Royale mode, which is, I think is the first mode I'm going to have. Because um, that's actually pretty easy to code. Uh, and then I'll probably start build, doing the building blocks for the second phase of the game, which is the actual like Tarkov you know, simulator thing where you just run around the world and collect loot and kill shit. Right? I'm trying to figure out two things now. One is how long do I want a fight to last? Um, cause you'll be able to heal and repair armor, but obviously it's going to take like a lot of seconds cause I still want you to, you know, you know, still get a hit essentially. So I still have that aspect of it. And of course it'll still be like a full loot thing. So you die and you don't like insure your items, you know, that you lose everything. So I still want to play around with that just a little bit. Right. But I still want that, you know, dread and fear in the game. Cause that's why we all love Tarkov. Uh... But, you know, on the other hand, I still want to try and make it a little more casual friendly. So I know, because I know one of the bigger frustrating things is you go into the game, like Tarkov, you have like a million rubles worth of gear, and then you just die instantly to like some random stupid shit. And you don't even know why. And it's so fucking tilting. All right. I really hate that aspect of Tarkov. It's like, then, then why bother? Then why bother playing? You know, why bother bringing in gear? Right. And it's just very irritating. So. I want to definitely make sure you can't do that, so that's why I'm thinking it might take you 10 seconds, assuming both of you have the same gear and like you're both wearing armor, obviously. Uh, yeah, and then uh, I have to think about the mechanics of how that'll work, because I want to probably keep it as simple as possible. I thought maybe you know you have different types of guns or, or different types of ammo loaded in, you can do different types of damage. It's like, no, that's really complicated. It's like, I should keep it simple. You know, it'll be less work, but more importantly, it'll just be less bugs. Because I am trying to create like a game that's kind of dumbed down, hence the word casual, right? So, you know, uh, but I don't know, I'll, I'll play around with it. And then I have to think about the economy of the game, too. Like, I always dreamed about how to create the best economy in the world, right? Because that's all I ever think about. It's like, I, I love the game of money. It's like, and then I'm, so now I realize I'm at the point in my life where I actually get to actually hacked upon you know what i've always dreamed about as a kid right it's like you know it's like wow okay so it's like you know, like it's go time now it's like oh i have to really i have to really sit down and think about these things so it's it's a really cool experiment and of course you know it's related directly to this shit because like you know it's the same thing right except of course in cryptocurrency it's 
real, real life. In, in a video game, it's not. So there are some differences. Uh, with that being said, I still kind of want to try to create like some kind of like real money marketplace or something like that. So we could actually play the game and make real money off it and I take a percentage. But I think that'll have to come later because I definitely have to like probably get a lawyer and then like try to figure out how all that shit's going to work. So uh, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, and then if it's on like Apple and then Steam, right? You know, what, what about the legalities of that? So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have to look into all that. But let's say they all say no, then that's fine. Then people want to do RMT, they just go on my website or they download the client. Uh, and then they just do the RMT that way. And then, well, I mean, what's what's Apple and Steam going to say? Like, no. Yeah, so. Um, but I, I don't know. That's the thing. I have, to, I have to check it so that. I don't know. They should, uh, see this thing. I mean, as long as Apple and Steam can get their fee, right? And then the AirPress has got to get their fee. That means I gotta get my fee. Shit, there's gonna be a lot of fees involved, so it's gonna be kind of tough. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure out the details later, though. So anyway, um, what you might call it? Uh, Bitcoin searches for last week is still at seven, so it's about it's pretty, it's pretty much finalizing at seven. It looks like, but of course, it can always change and adjust. Uh, cryptocurrency uh, seems to be up today because uh, last night before I went to bed, it was actually going down quite a bit. It was Bitcoin is as low as 9200 uh, but now we see it's at 9450 so it looks like it's getting ready to go back up so that's very nice Bitcoin dominance is at 65.5 percent 24-hour volume is still pretty healthy at 113.5 billion essentially uh, this is on a Saturday into, into Sunday so cryptocurrency is still buzzing with activity right people still want this shit so it's very very bullish uh, as we could see, things are either going up, or as you can see on the right-hand side, I mean, uh, you know, shit's just going up or flatlining, right? But flatlining towards the upside, so it's very, very good, very bullish. Like, there's just no indication that any of this shit's going down, and that's what we want. The more indicators that it's going up, the more likely it's going to go up, you know? It's like probabilities. You have a 20% chance to be bull run, and then, you know, maybe something changes, and, sh and it sh see, looks like it's going to be now 40% then 50% and so on and so forth, all right? When you play video games, which which is what I encourage all of you to eventually do, you'll start learning to think naturally in probabilities because that's how life really is, all right? You know, like you, you walk outside your apartment or house or whatever, there's, there's a probability that you just might die instantly, just like act of God or some random shooting or some stupid shit like that. But most of the time it doesn't, right? Because the probability of that actually happening is like, what, one in like, you know, 50 million or something. Some ridiculously small number. So, you know, that, that's why probabilities is a nice way to mathematically look at all this stuff. So pro so probability-wise, this looks very, very good for us, right? You know, I'm, I'm like 95% confident. Um, oh, speaking of 95% confident, um... I finally got two by two coin listed on BTC Pop, and it's already up and running. Uh, and right now, uh, this thing, I think for a tep I think temporarily two by two coin might actually skyrocket a little bit in price before it finally settles down to whatever it should be worth, because you know everyone's got to shift all that two by two coin uh, supply and shift it over to BTC Pop, because someone actually bought it for like two hundred and fifty satoshis of Bitcoin. And it's way overvalued, but that's because no one's selling it right now. So, but uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, where were we? So Bitcoin ninety four fifty looks pretty good. Uh, looks like it's getting ready to go back up. Uh, Litecoin has recovered. It's now at seventy one sixty seven. So same thing, flatlining towards the upside. It's a very strong sign. Uh, let's see, a lot of greed across the board. XRP's finally skyrocketing. So. Good news is all the crypto, all the altcoins are finally getting their day in the light, so uh, so to speak. So very nice. Uh, Neo is still around. Um, Dog coins at three hundred seven point seven million market cap. So pretty good. Uh, Dog. Oh, actually, wait, that's very good. Yeah. So dog coins finally going up too. So thank God my shitty little dog coins are worth something finally. And let's see, good old Steam's at 17.58 cents. It's up 5.48%. All right, so this is fantastic. So cryptocurrency is just uh, up across the board. This is perfect. This is this is amazing. With with the altcoin specifically uh, going up a lot. That's that's good. It's very good. 
cans at six dollars when it closed on the end of Friday. Interesting. Okay. Wow, the Dow lost six hundred points on Friday. <laughs> Holy shit! And that only that's only two percent. That's actually not that bad, actually. All right. And of course, like, yeah. See, this isn't our problem. Uh, is like cryptocurrency stocks like because they don't trade on Saturday and Sunday they're obviously going to be disjointed from the actual crypto markets so JFC coin is at two to three as always with you know three eventually going to disappear uh, with that being said for some reason it's under maintenance which is hilarious because who the hell trades JMC coin right even though it's probably the most stable crypto for now but you know, we'll we'll see. I uh, once I come up with the game, then I'll then I, I'll obviously continue to think about the economy. Um, I'm thinking I'm actually going to have obviously a hybrid between how Tarkov does their economy and how Albion Online does their economy. And I definitely have to create like a monthly premium subscription thing that's optional, but obviously you're going to buy it because you're going to get uh you know uh, pay to win only subscription benefits for doing so. And I probably increase experience and. I don't know, probably increased other shit, probably something like crafting, which will allow you to make more money, etc. So, it, it, you know, and then uh, I was reading how Path of Exile's economy works, which is Path of Exile economy. Uh, I want their blog post. Um, let me see. Path of Exile economy explain blog. Let's see, I can, I'm trying to get, because someone, I, I, someone linked to it. Here we go. A blog for, no. Because uh, Path of Exile developers actually wrote a blog post. <sighs> Great. Now, now I have to use this shit. Um, all right. Well, I was kind of hoping I would get the actual source. Um, let me see. I can just try to find it. Explain blog post. All right. Let's see. Uh, Path of Exile blog. Uh, I don't think this is actually the correct one. All right. Well, basically, the way the Path of Exile one works is there's no actual money in the game. Instead, what they do is they create items that trade up higher to like a higher tier version of an item. So like ten of these little uh, I think script of wisdom is equal, now gives you like a, like two scrolls of wisdom or something like that and then like ten of these scrolls become like this and it's so on and so forth and it keeps like upgrading until like you get to the end thing which I don't know I stopped playing because I just got bored so that's how that's how they created their economy for and each of these items all actually have some kind of use case like they actually do something in the game. Um, I actually will do something maybe like this, but definitely every item will have a use case. Definitely everything will be consumable, so you can always break it down into like salvage parts or um, you know experience points or stat points or whatever. But more likely, uh, experience points and salvage. Uh, which I'm call and then yeah, you know, and I forgot where I was going with all of this, but basically I'm gonna do something like that. But I still want money in the game because we all relate to money, right? We all like making money, and we and we don't like it when we lose or spend money, right? Unless we know that we're spending money to get a, some kind of tangible benefit, or at least some benefit that makes us feel good. So. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do something like that. So I combine all the things and I come up with like a master, a master China like you know run economy. So you know it's good. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be so much fun. Basically, all day I'm just gonna be sitting in this chair, just rubbing my hands together and going, <laughs> what should what shall I control today? Kind of thing, right? So, uh, so I'm gonna have to you know uh, do all those fun little things. So anyway, uh, yeah. So JMC's at two to three again. It's in, maintenance for some reason 404 koi uh is just cannot catch a break so it's at 13 to 14 um at least the good news is you know there'll be more resistance but uh i guess i guess eventually it's going to drop down to one at the rate things are going but uh because i do actually have a nice chunk of 404 coins on my btc pop account because i actually like using that as like i mean not only as a secondary backup source of like you know mining coins in case i something god forbid happens and then you know i can't restore the wallet from my end i have a backup right uh 
you know, but with that being said, it also has a very good accounting, right? Because it's usually pulling info probably from CoinGecko, and CoinGecko pretty much pulls info from here. So I don't have to do any of the monetary math. So like, you know, if I see a number that's like, you know, a thousand dollars, that's not the real number. I'm using something fake, obviously. So let's say it's worth a thousand and then it drops to like 600. Then I know, oh, 404 coin has dropped 40% in price, but then that doesn't make sense. And I have a, I have a frame of reference essentially. So right now it's actually undervalued. It's supposed to be at 17 to 18, but right now people just don't want to buy. But, um, you know, hopefully people are getting over the China flu fears. Uh, you know, crypto is going up with altcoins going up specifically. So hopefully that should mean that 404 coin will at least capture some of this upside. Because this thing is way behind, but it, it may never recover. Because people are just constantly dumping this coin just to get like all the other coins. It's very irritating. 2x2 uh, two two coin is doing all right because the supply is not really out of control yet. It's at, in fact still in its young stages. So it's a 62 to 64. Uh, well, maybe uh, BTC Pop's net new listing will change prices a bit, so we'll see. Uh, but you know, uh, you know, it's uh, things will always go back down to what it's really worth, which is why ultimately uh, I need this game out because without the game, we don't actually have a real use case that is not gambling. So yeah, uh, where do we have. Um, Compound coins at 41.50 to 49.80, so it's looking pretty healthy. And of course, no real changes here on this front. Uh, of course, no real buys, so um, you know, not much changes there. All right, so I didn't really bother looking at the news today, so we'll just go through it real quick. Uh, I mean, for the most part, it's Sunday, so I'm not expecting much. Uh, there's a Bitcoin emoji. Uh, that's actually pretty cool. Let's actually test that out now. Uh, Twitter.com. So what's Nick say more? Um, uh, well, he actually tweeted a lot of shit today. Uh, uh, okay. I actually I want to read all this, but right now I want to keep this video short. So go here uh, there's a Bitcoin emoji well that didn't work uh, let's see Bitcoin what BTC ah oh, what they, they lied no Bitcoin uh, okay whatever I, I guess he's not implemented it yet Bitcoin goes by on Twitter adds BTC emoji oh wait it is there it says hashtag Bitcoin really let's try this oh yeah nick fuentes is now uh accepting bitcoin so he's finally got it through his head very good i'm kind of wondering is he watching my content uh so i think the way it works is i gotta go like this hey no there, there's no emoji here what the fuck? oh there's btc right but why doesn't Bitcoin. Oh, it is here. What? It doesn't show up here. Okay, that's kind of a that's kind of a uh, bug. All right, so that's pretty cool. Twitter adds Bitcoin emoji. It's a little bugged, but obviously it literally just came out in the last four to eleven hours. So it's probably taking. It's actually maybe it needs to propagate throughout all the Twitter servers worldwide or something. As you predicted, yeah, we don't care about that. We're now as predict the bullish and bearish case for Bitcoin. Yeah, we don't care about that. I, all of you already know because you're watching me, obviously. So, uh, U.S. Congress mentions XRP and Ripple during tech discussion. Uh, blah blah blah. So, even though we might be um, censored, at least Congress will take a positive view of cryptocurrency, at least for now. Of course, they'll change their tune once they see that, like all us uh, right-wing people, like Nick Fuentes and the Thunder Daily folks, are actually making a big. Uh, big progress using crypto and then people are going to start freaking out so uh, that's what we're gonna to have to look at bitcoin is sorry as investors panic about coronavirus um i mean i guess i mean that's actually technically a good thing right um but i mean ultimately bitcoin also goes down when stock markets go down like we don't actually like that but people people just want something safe right and then they're obviously not going to dogpile into shitty gold so uh bitcoin's gonna become more scarce is google trying to kill bitcoin uh it's possible um 
Let's see. Yeah, that's gonna be a thing too. It's like Well, I think it should be fine. I mean, there's a Coinbase app. There is probably like other fiat uh, to crypto and crypto to fiat exchange applications. And they're all on Apple, iOS, and Android, I assume. In fact, let's see. Uh, Apple iOS store. Uh, can I search? Let's see. Coinbase, let's see. I mean, I don't even use Apple. Yeah, Coinbase buy and sell, Coinbase wallet. So yeah, Coinbase Pro. So Coinbase has a lot of shit here. I see Robinhood, I see Gemini, I see Crypto Pro. Yeah, I see a lot of Bitcoin shit here. Um, App Store. Nope, wrong one. Google Play. Uh, here we go. Uh, let's see, let's do Coinbase. Yeah, Coinbase is here. They got the exact same shit here. Yeah, there's a lot of Coinbase shit here. Uh, we only interested in apps. See more apps. All right? You know, you got your blockchain wallet. Yeah, so I think it should be fine. Right? And I'm not going to allow cryptocurrency transactions when you play Google Play or uh, uh, Apple, whatever, anyway, right? Because they don't actually allow it. They want you to use uh, the Google Play financial services, which is U.S. dollars. So... Yeah, but anyway, but I know what I definitely know what I'm going to do if that's the case. What I'm going to do is if you like, for example, premium, let's say I charge, I don't know, like 10 bucks a month for premium. Right. So on Steam, on Google Play, on Apple iOS, it's all ten dollars. Right. But, you know, maybe you want but maybe you're playing on like the web browser. Right. You know, which is where I'm going to put all like the actual cryptocurrency shit or like the private client. Right because I can also convert it into an executable by Unity, I assume. So maybe you'll get a discount. Maybe you pay with GMC or 404 or 2x2 two two card or whatever coin. Uh, you only pay like, you know, $7, all right? So, you know, it's, it's, so that's like, that's how I'll do it, all right? So uh, if you, if you want to play with the more convenient shit, you know, that's more mass market, Steam, Apple Store, you know, uh, Google Store, etc. Yeah, you're gonna pay extra money for, it, especially since they're gonna take like anywhere. I know Steam takes thirty percent. I think Google Play takes twenty percent. So I mean, I have to make up for the fee somehow. So yeah, you know, I'm gonna charge. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna charge you a pretty penny for premium. Also, I don't think it's gonna be ten dollars. Like the problem is charging people like twelve to fifteen bucks a month for premium. It's kind of expensive. I'm basically charging the same amount as uh, World of Warcraft. But the difference is you can get access to the full game without paying premium. So it's actually optional. So I think because of that, I have a right to charge higher because it compensates for the fact that, hey, it's optional. If you want to play World of Warcraft, you have to fork over $15 in a, a month or, or $16 a, a month in my case because of the New York City sales tax or New York State sales tax bullshit. So, you know, I'll still have to play around with it. And I'll be on online recently, increased their monthly fee now, just now to $12. All right. Uh, I'll be on online price increase. Because I know it costs 3,000 gold, but. Uh, premium. All right, so yeah, they chart they're not, yeah they increased it two dollars to twelve bucks a month now. Okay, yeah, so that's that's what it is. Yeah, so I don't know. So it's it's gonna be kind of a it's gonna be kind of a lot. Anyway, uh, suggest the uh, Bitcoin DeFi ride somewhere. Nope, nothing here. Renowned Alice present the bullish and bearish. Okay, I read that. Uh, Litecoin gains, yes, of course. But I mean, I've always liked Litecoin. So obviously, all of you have, that were smart enough to listen to me all this time, you know, you're making a pretty penny. Actually, it still has to make up for the fact that Litecoin used to be worth like ninety five dollars or something like that peak last year. So now it's finally playing catch up. But once it gets over that hump, you know, it'll uh, it'll skyrocket quite nicely. Or as it should. That's what it always has done. When Bitcoin ran up to like. At the time, I still remember this. It was like ten dollars and shot up all the way to two hundred bucks. I remember Litecoin was like fractions of a penny and then went up to like ten, fifteen dollars. Like the return, the ROI return was ridiculous. And then when Bitcoin eventually, you know, many years later, which was three, four years ago, uh, when Bitcoin was like nineteen thousand five hundred to twenty grand, Litecoin was like three hundred fifty-three dollars, up from like 
10, 15 bucks or something. So, uh, yeah, it's like, you know, it's just, it's just you're, you're literally printing money in real life, right? You know, so got to take advantage of that. All right, nearly. All right, let's refresh this one more time. Yeah, I guess this video is a little shorter than usual. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, BitChute's actually pretty decent now. Like, they were actually able to instantly process my video yesterday, which kind of shocked me. So maybe they really did add more processing videos. But I'm still not going to do, like, crazy political stuff as much as I'd love to. Because uh, for now, like, if I make the game, i got to make myself more optics friendly. I, I fucking hate optics friendly. But I kind of have to, right? Because if Microsoft wants to sponsor me for like a tournament, I eventually will have, right? Or Intel, right? They, they're not, they're not going to do it if like you know I'm covering like the truth, right? And I'm actually exposing the real globalists. If in fact they're probably part of the globalist cabal, so they probably don't want me uh, doing that shit, right? So I'm like, oh, God. Right, so you know it, it is what it is, but eventually, you know, um, Nick Fuentes and the Groypers will, uh, you know, have uh, have their day in the sun. All right, in fact, they already did with the Groyper Wars last year. So uh, you know, we'll, uh, you know, we'll I look forward to seeing what they're going to do. Uh, XRP, don't care about that. Does anyone actually have a plan for the next bit, big Bitcoin bull run? Yes. In fact, we've had my plan in place for years now. Right, I've only like you know all of you already know. Crypto legend, uh, let's see. Eh. Bitcoin Tesla even bubbles happen around things that change the world, says Mike Novogratz. That's true. Um, hmm. Actually, we might want to read this. This is actually more principle stuff and theory. Uh, actually, it's not theory, it's actually been proven true. Former Goldman Sachs person says Bitcoin posed to beat every asset over the next decade. Yes, because it's literally going to trend. It already has transformed our world and will continue to transform our world. And then the amount of value that generates is basically going to definitely be tens of trillions of dollars at least. Microsoft says cyber thieves exploiting death of Kobe Bryant's like crypto. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but that that's so that's especially cruel. Like what the what the fuck, man? Like poor Kobe Bryant, his kid is dead with him and probably in heaven, like hopefully, and then like seven other people. I don't know how many people died in the helicopter. Like there was five other people and seven other people, including Kobe. It's like I don't know. It's like it sounds like like you know fifty thousand people died in this car uh, helicopter crash, but they're all hopefully in heaven and like you're gonna be an asshole and like scam people out of money or it's just on one hand yeah it is funny but on the other hand it's just so mean like i i, I would never do that uh, i guess unless I, unless I was like desperate and like if i didn't do it i would actually die from starvation then okay that's understandable but here this is like that's just that's just jeez oh people in this world ripple says tipping point to critical mass adoption of xrp uh and crypto assets moving closer uh i mean I, I mean, it's Ripple. I'm just not interested. But yeah, I'm glad that they're doing more fundamental shit. So yeah, uh, we're on track for Bitcoin to a million. I mean, it may not hit it, but you know, that's because there's a lot of fundamentals that still need to be done. And on top of that, I still need America to actually outright come out and say, we are making America coin, right? You know, so we'll see. We'll see. Bitcoin, Tesla, you know, must bubbles happen around, blah, 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 blah. All right, so Mike says, comparing the lead crypto, Bitcoin, electric car, unicorn, Tesla, in a new interview with Bloomberg, the former Goldman Sachs partner, a hedge fund manager, says both represent revolutionary tech that changes the world, uh, and speculative bubbles form around them. Well, the reason why this speculative bubble is forming is manyfold. One, we all know it's going to change it. Two, we don't know how much, but we know it's going to be a lot. And number three, we know that it's actually got real value, especially because we see the value and everyone else in the world doesn't. So when the rest of the world catches up to us, they're going to, that's actually what's going to drive the bubble. We're in on the ground floor before the buildings even open. So that's why there's no one around except you and me. Right? Just picture, picture the Empire State Building. Everyone thinks for whatever reason it's worthless, right? So there's only, but the, the Empire State Bill is not done being constructed yet, but it's still kind of usable, right? It's kind of like what cryptocurrency is today. And there is like, I don't know, a thousand of us in the, actually that's a lot. Um, oh, there's like 50 of us inside the Empire State Building on the ground floor, like literally speaking. So like we're there, 
It's like, okay, well, you know, it's like, okay, we, we can start buying up the place and just wait for the people to come in. So that's kind of like what this is. So, yeah. Uh, Tesla stock soar since uh, blah, blah, blah. No regrets admits so that he made a mistake in shorting Tesla. That's hilarious. You shorted Tesla? I cut my old rule when I said don't short Elon Musk and Tesla feels like Bitcoin. It's not a fundamental story anymore, so any bit of good news is going to shoot it up. Yeah, I don't know why people like to trash Tesla so much or Elon Musk. Like he, He's always been a pretty stand-up guy from what I could tell, and he does like a bunch of cool shit. So I, I don't know. Uh, now, that being said, would I still drive a Tesla? I'm a little paranoid about my Tesla cars exploding for no reason. So, because uh, I've seen the pic, because I, because Mike Snerich used to like post occasional pictures of Tesla. And then you see like the pictures of Tesla cars just exploding and on fire. Well, not exploding, but on fire, like spontaneously for no reason. And it's clearly not arson, right? It's like there's something, went, it's like, I don't think I want to be driving around in that, especially with a wife or girlfriend and the kids. It's like, yeah, how do you work? Cars on fire, and we're in the middle of a highway, so we're gonna have to make a <laughs> weave through dangerous traffic at like 80, 60 miles an hour, so we could escape this uh, death trap. So it's like, yeah, I think I should stick with the Volvo. No regret says that he's waiting for a pullback to get. Um, well, that being said, I still kind of want a Tesla car, but uh, well, we'll have to see. Uh, for pullback, get out of his short position. Although he's a fan, he believes the stock will correct since assets just don't go to the moon. When asked to clarify his Tesla Bitcoin comparison, he explains, this is a Tesla bubble. There's no doubt that this is a bubble. Okay. Uh, Tesla cars are amazing. Elon has all kinds of tech he's delivering. So the story is so powerful. It sucks everybody in. Um, technically, this is true, but I would not agree with this completely because he didn't say the magic words. What is the financial value of what Tesla is doing? And what is the financial value of what he will do? And what does the market think it's worth? All right. If Elon Musk is currently worth, I don't know, 300 million, let's keep the number simple, $300 million, right? Tesla's worth 300, well, it's actually worth way more than that. Um, 10 billion. Let's say Elon Musk and Tesla is in the company, it's worth 10 billion, right? All the stuff he's doing. And then all the stuff he will do is going to be worth 20 billion, but the market, stock markets think it's worth 8 billion, all right? Well, now you're missing out on $12 billion worth of potential value. Like, again, this goes to um, vision. Most people, for some reason, just don't have vision or don't want to develop it. So that's what, and then that's where, and that's where the speculation comes in. Because you know, I would think, oh, it's worth 12 billion, right? It's just not pricing in the market yet because he's going to do this, this, and that. You know, fundamentals. Um, so he's basically saying that he's already tapped out and is, is more overvalued. But this is thinking in terms of. Um, present uh, present stuff now i don't know anything about tesla or like spaceships and shit so i just kind of assume that he's just doing a lot of crazy like new technology shit that creates value so that's why i'm not going to think it, uh, look into it but you know cryptocurrency that i do know right because i understand the financial markets all right i've studied it all my life right you know central banking the concept of monetary theory and all that shit Electric car companies for current valuation may not be justified. According to Mike, who also can see a stock price could continue to uh, Tesla's world changing narrative, fueling the bubble as we're going Bitcoin. And then Mike is on board with both. He loves gold. He loves Bitcoin because we got too much liquidity around. We're debasing a currency over time. Well, we're always debasing it, right? I mean, if 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 cryptocurrency and proof of stake money has taught me anything over a few years, there's always going to be inflation. So there's nothing you could do about it. It's the same thing with uh, MMO economies. There's always going to be inflation. So you have to learn to uh, control the inflation or just give people a reason to keep spending money. And then they get, uh, they get joy out of it. They get joy out of it more so than they do when they have to spend on stupid shit like rent and repair expenses and stuff like that. Because people don't hate money. They hate when they have to lose money. So that is, it's, it's all psychology. Bitcoin has bubble in 2017 and now it's an asset. It's a people, it's a weapon people's portfolio. It's a diversion of gold. We call it digital gold. Uh, it doesn't trade like where to speak a bubble. It's grinding higher. It just jumps a little. It recovers a throw the way it's trading this year. If it, if it hadn't rallied during Iran, if it hadn't rallied during the virus, I'd be, I have been nervous, but it did. So I'm gaining confidence in the Bitcoin position. Yeah, I've said this before in previous videos. Um, probably I had to delete a lot of my bit shoot videos from for the past couple months. 
But I said Bitcoin was up despite Iran. Bitcoin was also up despite the virus. So that indicates extremely bullish uh, uh, pressure. All right. And then he and then this really rich guy, Mike Novogratz, also he's like a billionaire. Whatever he says, exactly the same thing. Except we have a couple of differences. So yeah, it's just uh, I don't know, just basically free money at this point, right? So it's just buy, hold, mine, and then just wait, right? So anyway, if you like what you uh, like, saw, read, or heard, or whatever, uh, hit the like button, the follow button, subscribe button from wherever you're watching this from, or my bit shoots, or bit shoots. YouTube's at youtube.com forward slash uh, the lemon factor BTC because I wish I could have a better um, URL which I cannot change. So anyway, I'm honestly done for the day. It's just one video a day. So uh, thank you to the one person that subscribed. Right. So uh, I don't know. I guess I don't really care about the subscribe number anymore. Virtually, I guess I don't have to worry with the fame part anymore. So. Um, Anyway, well, uh, you know, enjoy the rest of your day or night. Uh, today's my physical day off, so I'll probably uh, buy some tissues because i got to replace all these uh, Chipotle uh, things because uh, I constantly use it to, you know, I basically use it as a napkin and I blow my nose with it too. I was, no, actually, no, I don't want to describe the story, but I had to deal with a giant rodent yesterday. I'll keep it vague. And it was disgusting, and after I finally managed to kill it, like... Uh, it, yeah, the smell, uh, it's just like, my God, it's like, uh, it's like, I can't believe we used to have to like live with these rodents. Like when we were like thousands of years ago or, you know, tens of thousands or millions of years ago or whatever. Right. It's just like, oh God, it's just like, uh, but I, you know, I cleaned it and, you know, I got it disposed of the thing, you know, I immediately, you know, threw it on the garbage and then I definitely cleaned the areas. And of course myself with antibacterial soap. So like, you know, it's like, oh, thank God. It's like, ugh, uh, but anyway, uh, actually, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, actually, I didn't realize, maybe some of you might be eating. That's why I wasn't uh, too specific, right? But that's because I'm, I still have the image and the smell in my brain. It was just like, oh, my God. I don't even understand why, because I actually keep my kitchen pretty clean. So I, it's like, actually, maybe it was because it was attracted to the garbage bag, and then I finally disposed of it, but, but by then it was too late. So maybe that's why. Uh, so anyway, uh, enjoy the rest of your day or night. Hopefully I didn't make you disgusted when you were eating your food. I didn't mean to do that. But anyway, uh, things are looking good for crypto. Hopefully 404 coin recovers. Uh, if it doesn't, well, you know, it'll just continue. It'll eventually find some sort of resistance and it'll, you know, happily stay around there. And then hopefully in a few months, you know, we'll have some kind of prototype of the game out. And then shortly thereafter, I'll look into... Um, implementing coin payments i mean i don't want to do it so i don't want to monetize it that fast with crypto all right because what's important is that the product the game itself is solid so uh but you know yeah anyway uh thanks for watching see you all in tomorrow's videos and uh yeah uh always remember johnson chan jfc coin let's see hardly oh actually there's a lot more views this time around 404 coin oh actually yeah people are becoming more interested in crypto i see more views now Yep, there we go. And uh, yeah, we're definitely going to be making a lot of money. Let's just hope that it'll still be in the millions, right? For me, my target is several million dollars, right? That's, that's what I'm going for. But if I make like several hundred thousand to like a low amount of like, you know, like 1.2 million, well, okay, you know, it's not, it's not quite enough, but, you know, obviously I'll, I'll still get by and then I uh, run up. I run my ass over to Tampa, Florida, and then I can leave behind stupid asshole New York City. I also read that uh, New York City has the most singles in the world. It's also that's why it's the shittiest place to uh, freaking date or whatever. I don't know.